Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So this one is going to be quick and it's going to be me being somewhat ill-tempered. This article came out. Democrats add to a better deal platform with a slew of pro-union labor ideas, pro-labor and union ideas. They add to a better deal with pro-labor and union ideas. I, I looked at this and it's November 1st, so it's relatively recent. It's Dave Weigel. Yeah, David Weigel, mustachioed, you know, porn star in his off, off time. And I, I thought to myself, why now? Like, why now? What? Why is it that you have to lose this much? to get to the point, like a thousand legislative seats. I mean, to be this hated, 37% approval rating. Why do you have to be this hated to get to this point, losing a presidential election, to introduce labor and union ideas? You had power for eight years. Part of that eight years, you had the capacity to do labor and union things. You didn't do those things. Instead, your party went balls out to try to pass a Trans-Pacific Partnership. That's what, was, that's what you guys did. Why now? Why does... It, it's, I guess my issue is, you moved this far to the right. Why do you believe, or why did you believe you need to move this far to the right? Now, I would argue you moved that far to the right because you thought we need to get cash to get elected. And if we do this pro-labor and union stuff, we can't get elected. We can't do both. It, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. It's not that you can't get elected. It's ultimately we can't get the dollars and the cash from people who will be adversely affected if these are the interests we represent. Meaning, if we listen to our base, if we listen to the American public, what the American public wanted, if we moved to the left, if we moved to the left, which is what the public wants, we're going to lose our funders. That's the crux of this. That's the argument. That's the conversation that's taking place between labor and plutocrats represented through the Democratic Party. Meaning Democrats say our plutocrats say that we can only do this much. And Democrats will try to make the argument for why doing just this much is what's right. Now, whatever they're going to do, it's going to be least worse than the Republican Party. So ultimately, what you're left with is how fucked over do you want to be? After having power for eight years, after for a period of time during that eight years, having absolute power, they now come with their hat in their hands saying, please vote for us. We have a better deal. We've lost so much. We've lost so, so much. We have a better deal. We have a better deal. I know we said we were going to do a better deal last time. I know we said if we got power, if we got any power at all, we would do better. But I'm sorry, we didn't. When Obama was in office, when the unions wanted him to pass the legislation that would allow the easier creation of unions, when Scott Walker was breaking unions in Wisconsin, they didn't say squat. They didn't say squat. You let them attack your base. You let them attack your base. You looked at labor and told labor that you had nowhere else to go and you're going to support us regardless. And it's only now that labor is talking about maybe we need to do something different. Maybe we need to have a new party. It's only now when massive amounts of labor voted for Donald fucking Trump, a goddamn blue collar billionaire, because they thought he was a better option than anything they were going to get from the Democratic Party. How low you have fallen. How low you've fallen. FDR is spinning in his grave. LBJ is spinning in his grave. JFK is spinning in his goddamn grave. You guys are fucking pathetic. Nobody should have to wring your hands in this way for you to come out with a pro-labor platform. Who do you represent? Who do you represent? Is that not the operative question? And why weren't you representing them before if you're so willing to try to represent them now with this incrementalism shit? The question to you, the operative question, the question that the Democratic Party continuously fails
to not answer, answer or to release not answer in a satisfactory way who do you represent and why do you have to be conjoled and beat over the head and pushed along in order to represent that interest keep it I don't want a situation where you have to continuously keep an eye on each and every party member because the party member leans in the opposite way of your intentions I don't want to have to beat the party members over the head because they don't necessarily actually believe those things and accept this as well this is the best that can be done this is the best that can be done I don't accept that I don't accept that at all what I accept is you have a very specific interest that you yourselves are trying to maintain and you would say whatever you need to say whatever you need to say to get people to buy in from your public relations standpoint you've gone to your plutocrat friends and you said, look, we got to give them something. They're not biting on the old stuff. We have to give them something. And what you guys have come up with is, okay, let's be a little bit more incremental in the way we do things. We'll increment it one more. Is this enough? Is this enough? No, Chuck, it's not enough. It's not enough. You need to be gone. You need to be voted out of your seats. You need to be dragged and voted out of your seats. Because ultimately, what you represent is not the exact same thing. Nobody should have to beat you over the head to get you to a position towards labor. Nobody should have to do that. If you have to do that, meaning if you have to lose this much, what if Hillary Clinton would have won? Do you honestly believe this shit would have came out if Hillary Clinton would have won? This is purely as a result of being opposition to Donald Trump. That's all this is. That's purely an opposition. This is purely them saying, okay, we need to do something because the public is not with us and they don't see the very distinction between us and the Republican Party. And that's sad. That is so sad. That is so sad. Yeah, this is not enough. The point is not, oh, here's one more tweak. Here's one more tweak. See, we're a little bit more, at least worse. We're a little bit more, at least worse. The problem, Chuck. The problem, Chuck. The problem, Nancy. To be very clear, there shouldn't be a situation where you have to be beat over the head to represent labor. And if you have to be beat over the head to represent labor, if you have to lose a thousand legislative seats to represent labor, if you have to do that, it means that you don't represent labor. It means you represent something else and you're bending a little bit to try to get the labor vote. The union should form another party. The progressives should leave you. They should start another party. And even if they don't have another party, they shouldn't vote for you. The answer needs to be no. The answer should be no. This piecemeal shit is not it. You don't represent the interests of labor. You don't represent the interests of the 99%. You don't even represent the interests of the 90% or the lower 90%. The answer is no. This is embarrassing. Because the moment that you come out with this new, new, updated, slightly better deal, it leads to the glaring realization that the last eight years, you guys had your thumb in your ass. That's what it means. That's what it means. Here's our new better deal. Why do you need a better deal? Why do you need a better deal? This is my point. This is the thing that aggravates me. Why do you need a better deal? If you're representing what you say you represent, you've been screaming to the rooftops that you guys are the party of labor and this is the thing that you want people to believe. Fine. Fine. I hold you to your standard. I hold you to the things that you say. Why do you need a better deal? And does it mean that you weren't representing the interests of labor in those constituencies before if you have to up the ante on the least worseness? It's fucking amazing. No. If you believe this, you're insane. These guys are saying whatever they have to say to be opposition to Trump. They always do it. They always say it. In four years, however long, they're going to forget about all the stuff that they're saying. If you want to hold them to some level of accountability, vote their ass out of office. Vote their ass out of office. And I mean that when I say that means if somebody is not representing your interest, they should no way get your vote. No way get your vote. If that means that that Democrat loses, then good. That Democrat loses. That increases tension in regards to getting these people to actually change into a particular line but ultimately until you have some third party edifice that can challenge and destroy and undermine that party you're never going to get the things that you want to change in this country this is in no way represents labor they shouldn't have to be brought to the table in this way 
I Meaning you should have to be dragged and pulled for the least little support for the demographic that's supposed to be your base. It's fucking amazing. Can't stand these fucking guys. Vote their ass out of office. Vote their ass out of office. You may not necessarily have the votes to take them out for stuff like our revolution and everything else, but you do have the capacity to say no. Not be complicit in the things that they do in that office. Yes, at some point, you need to hold the line in regards to what you want. And this is by no means what I want. I would wager this is by no means what many of the other thousands or millions of progressives who are out there want either. If you have to do this, then you're not representing what you say you represent. That's my point. I'll leave it at that. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support through Patreon. Thanks, guys.